In this video, we're going to find out how to determine the row space, the column space, and the node space of a system of linear equations. But before that, let us understand about this statement. The elementary row operations do not change the row space and node space of a matrix, which means that if you have a matrix A in this form and you reduce it into the row operation into the row action form, these operations actually do to not does not change the row space and the node space of the matrix. And what does it mean by it? So let's consider that the first row column, the first row vector of A is 1, 3, and the second row is 2, 6. And we by inspection, we know that the second row is actually a combination uh, multiplication of the first row with a scalar of 2, which means that the second row is the redundant. And the only independent row vectors for A is R1. And that's why when we reduce it into the row action form, we only have one row column row vectors here, which is similar with the original one. But this is not the case for the column space. So let's look at the column space of the matrix A here is actually one and two, whereas the first column space of R, the reduced row action form, is one and zero. So the column space of A consists of all the scalar multiples of one and two. You just need to multiply this, you can get another set of column vectors. But the column space of R consists of all the scalar multiples of 1 and 0. No matter what, no matter how you multiply this, the second entry here will always be 0, which will not give you back to the column vectors here. And that's why we say that the elementary row operation do does change the column space of a matrix. For the null space, so let's consider this the null space AX equals to 0. The null space is the solution space of AX equals to 0. And let's imagine that you multiply the left hand side and the right hand side with an elementary matrix E here. You still end up with a 0 here, which means that the E multiplied with A and multiplied with the X will be a homogeneous linear system as well. So X is still in the null space of the matrix E A. Now let's consider how to find the basis for the null space of a matrix. The, this is the system of linear equations given and because we have a zero on the right hand side so this is a homogeneous linear system. So the null space of A is actually you put this into the augmented matrix form and you reduce until the row action form and then you recall back from the videos that you have, you have watched before how to determine the basis of the system of linear equations. You should end up with the three bases here, V1, V2, and V3, which means that you should have a three free variables or three parameters. So the null space of A will, has the, will have the basis of V1, V2, and V3. If a matrix R is in row action form, then the row vectors with the leading ones, the non-zero row vectors form a basis for the row space of R. And the column vectors with the leading ones of the row vectors form a basis for the column space of R. So this is the statement that we are going to use for the second basis here. So the second aspect is to find the basis for the row, the row and column spaces. Let's imagine this is the reduced row action form of a particular matrix A. So we are going to look at this R matrix only. So based on inspection, the leading ones will be this entry, this entry, and this entry. And the associated row vectors will be R1, R2, and R3, which can be written in this way. And the associated pivot column will be C1, C2, and C4. So I'm going to write it in this way. So these row vectors and these column vectors they are the basis for the row space and the column space for this reduced matrix form. But they are not the basis for the row and column space of the original matrix, which we are going to find out in the third aspect here. So which is the, to find the basis for a row space by row reduction. So since elementary row operations do not change the row space of a matrix, the basis for the row space of A is the same as the basis for the row space of R, the row action form of matrix A. So let's consider this matrix A. After you reduce into the row action form, you should have this form. And from the previous aspect here, we know that the row space 
the basis for the row space of R is actually the row with the leading one, the first row, second row, and the third row. And since elementary row operation do not change the row space, we can say that these three row vectors is actually the basis for the matrix A row space as well. And the fourth aspect is the basis for column space by row deduction. Because from the previous example, we found out that the elementary row operations do change the column space of the matrix. Hence, hence we can't assume that the column space here is the basis for the original matrix as well. So from the previous example here, we found out that the basis for the column space of R is 1, 0, 0, 0, the first, the third, and the fifth corresponding to the first, the third, and the fifth columns here. So these three column vectors, they are the basis for the column space of this reduced matrix, but they are not the basis for the original matrix. In order to find out the basis for the column space of A, you have to look at the corresponding column vectors, the first, the third, and the fifth. So we refer back to the original matrix, the first, the third, and the fifth. So these original columns here are the basis for the column space of the original matrix A.